Chapter 2. Name's Red, by the way. Maybe we've met. Oak tree near the elementary school. Big, but not too. Sweet shade in the summer. Fine color in the fall. I'm proud to say that I'm a northern red oak, also known as Quercus rubra. Red oaks are one of the most common trees in North America. In my neighborhood alone, hundreds upon hundreds of us are weaving our roots into the soil like knitters on a mission. I have ridged reddish-gray bark, leathery leaves with pointed lobes, stubborn searching roots, and, if I do say so myself, the best fall color on the street. Red doesn't begin to do me justice. Come October, I look like I'm ablaze. It's a miracle the fire department doesn't try to hose me down every autumn. You might be surprised to know that to learn that all red oaks are named red. Likewise, all sugar maples are called sugar, all junipers are called juniper, and all boojum trees are called boojum. That's how it is in tree world. We don't need names to tell one another apart. Imagine a classroom where every child is named Melvin. Imagine the poor teacher trying to take attendance each morning. It's a good thing trees don't go to school. Of course, there are exceptions to the name rule. Somewhere in Los Angeles, there's a palm tree who insists on being called karma. But you know how Californians can be. Chapter 3 My friends call me Red, and you can too. But for a long time, people in the neighborhood have called me the Wish Tree. There's a reason for this, and it goes way back to when I wasn't much more than a tiny seed with higher aspirations. Long story. Every year on the first day of May, people come from all over town to adorn me with scraps of paper, tags, bits of fabric, snippets of yarn, and the occasional gym sock. Each offering represents a dream, a desire, a longing. Whether draped, tossed, or tied with a bow, they're all hopes for something better. Wish trees have a long and honorable history. Going back centuries, there are many in Ireland where they are usually hawthorns or the occasional ash tree. But you can find wish trees all over the world. For the most part, people are kind when they visit me. They seem to understand that a tight knot might keep me from growing the way I need to grow. They are gentle with my new leaves, careful with my exposed roots. After people write their hope on a rag or piece of paper, they tie it onto one of my branches. Usually they whisper the wish aloud. It's traditional to wish on the first of May, but people stop by throughout the year. My, oh my, the things I have heard. I wish for a flying skateboard. I wish for a world without war. I wish for a week without clouds. I wish for the world's biggest candy bar. I wish for an A on my geography test. I wish Miss Gentarini weren't so grumpy in the morning. I wish my gerbil could talk. I wish my dad could get better. I wish I weren't hungry sometimes. I wish I weren't so lonely. I wish I knew what to wish for. So many wishes, grand and goofy, selfish and sweet. It's an honor, all the hopes bestowed upon my tired old limbs. Although, by the end of May Day, I look like someone dumped a huge basket of trash on top of me. I'm curious what you would wish for. I feel like right now, the time that we're in is a time to make some wishes and some hopes for things, for better things and better days ahead. And so I'm curious what your wish might be. It's also, interestingly, coming up on May Day, the end of this week, so the timing of this is really nice. Chapter 4. As you've probably noticed, I'm more talkative than most trees. This is new for me. I'm still getting the hang of it. Nonetheless, I've always known how to keep a secret. You have to be discreet when you're a wish tree. People tell trees all kinds of things. They know we'll listen. It's not like we have a choice. Besides, the more you listen, the more you learn. Bongo says I'm a busybody, and I suppose she has a point. She's my best pal, a crow I've known since she was nothing but a pecking beak in a speckled egg. We disagree sometimes, but that is the way of all friends, no matter their species. I've seen many surprising friendships during my life. A pony and a toad, a red-tailed hawk and a white-footed mouse, a lilac bush and a monarch butterfly. All of them had disagreements from time to time. 
I think Bongo is too pessimistic for such a young bird. Bongo thinks I'm too optimistic for such an old tree. It's true, I am an optimist. I prefer to take the long view on life. Old as I am, I've seen both good and bad, but I've seen far more good than bad. So Bongo and I agree to disagree, and that's fine. We're very different after all. Bongo, for example, thinks the way we name trees ourselves is ridiculous. As is the custom with crows, Bongo chose her name after her first flight. It may not be her only name, however. Crows change names on a whim. Bongo's cousin Gizmo has had 17 names. Sometimes crows adopt human names. I've seen more Joe Crows than I've seen Sunny Days. Sometimes they name themselves after things that catch their fancy. Pop Top, Jujubee, Dead Rat. They'll name themselves after aerobatic maneuvers, Death Spiral or Barrel Roll, or after colors, Aubergine or Beetle Black. Many crows opt for sounds they're fond of making. Crows are excellent mimics. I've met crows named Wind Chime, 18-wheeler, and grouchy cab driver, not to mention a few others that are not appropriate for polite company. Down the street lives an aspiring rock band composed of four middle schoolers. They practice in a garage. Their instruments include an accordion, a bass guitar, a tuba, and bongo drums. The band has yet to perform outside of the garage, but bongo likes to sit on the roof and sway to their music. Just a little picture of bongo. I thought it was interesting that Wish Tree read comments that because it's so old, it can appreciate that there's far more good in the world than bad. And I also like how respectful he is of his friend and having different opinions and different perspectives on things.